So Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16. We're going to continue and expand, expand on what we were speaking of last week. Uh, chapter 16 says this. Will you do me a favor? Will you stand for the reading of the word this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exodus 16 says, And they took their journey from Elam, and all of the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the fifteenth day in the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said unto them, would to God we have died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. When we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full. For you have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Put your first finger on verse 3 and let us pray. Father, God, we bless you in this place. We thank you for your presence and we thank you for your word. God, I pray that you will prepare us right now, Lord, to receive what you have to say to us this morning. God, prepare our ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And God, we receive in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. As I begin to pray this week, of Lord, what would you have us to uh, continue on or to expand in a different direction? The Lord just kept taking me to the whole story of the great exodus of the children of Israel. And the Lord began to share with me of how that we need to keep our eyes on the promise. I believe that sometimes we allow things to come in our life that just kind of deters us from the promise. See, as I continue to grow and to mature in life, and in the Lord, I have discovered that in order to achieve success, in order to attain a goal, in order to overcome the many pitfalls and the potholes that we have to encounter on this road called life, I've learned that anything that is worthwhile is worth fighting for. Amen? amen. That's a good time for you to say amen. Amen. Anything in this life that is worthwhile, it's worth fighting for. And anything in this life that is that is worthy is worthy to be uh, to have a, a, a battle. Uh, you know, to, to, you, and you're going to face this battle. It's kind of one man said: the higher the hill upon which you uh, tend to build your castle, the harder the climb it is to reach the top. And to reach the top, you both you've got to have both a, a made up mind and, and, and have your eyes and your mind focused on one thing. It can't be divided. Amen. See, united we stand as a nation, right? That's our motto: united we stand, divided we fall. We've seen so many uh, uh, um, uh, detriments. We've seen as a nation, uh, we, we've seen you know, 200 years plus. We've seen so many uh, things that has, has happened as how we've, we've stood together in times and adversity and we've risen to the occasion, but then we've seen such a moral decline and so much division. But even as the body of church, uh, uh, if you plan to reach the top, there's going to be a hill to climb in your life, in my life. If we plan to reach the top, if we plan to have success, there's always that successful ladder to climb. You got to, you know, that ladder to success. And, and today, I believe, as we read here, that that Israel had some division among them. There's a little bit of division in the camp. They had begun to face the very bitter experience of, of, of the long journey uh, that they saw the ghost of hunger and thirst and, 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 and had raised its head and frightened them. And they were so frightened to the extreme that they could not stop thinking about the past. They could not stop thinking about the flesh pots. Oh boy, that a preach right there. They couldn't stop thinking about the times that their bellies was full. <laughs> Woo, think about it. 
They, they, they could not stop thinking about these things. They became so discouraged even before they hardly had started the journey. They were discouraged. They, already, they launched out into this, 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 this road. Uh, and as soon as they hit the road, friend, they began to murmur and complain. And just because they had missed a meal or two, they wanted to go back to the camp of Egypt. Think about it, friend. Think about it. God broke their chains. He made the impossible possible. And yet they wanted to go back to making brick out of mud. Come on. They wanted to sell their future. They wanted to sell their destiny just to satisfy the hunger of their bellies. And if you think about it, the truth is this. The truth was is that they were seeing that freedom was not free at all. They were seeing that the cost of freedom was very high. It was a costly price and they feared to pay the price. They had their eyes on Canaan, but their mind was still on Egypt. Think about it, church. They lost their focus of the promise. Their eyes was on Canaan. Their mind was on Egypt. They looked one way, but they thought the other. They talked freedom, but they thought slavery. Friend, you've got to understand this as well. Is that Canaan and Egypt were all in the same valley, but in extreme opposite ends. In order to reach one, you had to turn your back on the other. Oh boy. <laughs> in order to reach freedom, you had to turn your back on slavery. In order to reach the promised land, you had to turn your back on Egypt. In order to reach your call and your destiny, you had to turn your back on the things of this world. Yes. Yes. To reach one, they had to turn their back. And as we read this story, we find that their eyes and their mind was in two places. A house divided among itself will fall. Their mind, their eyes was in two places. Uh, uh, one was in the cradle of their, their race of all they knew. And the other was the hope of their future. Shackles in one, songs in the other, freedom in Canaan, slavery in Egypt. Which would you choose? Now we say freedom, but think about it. Which would you choose this morning? I mean, come on. I mean, it was amazing to me as I read this over and over, and I've read it a hundred times, but it's amazing to me as I read this, what do you mean choosing to go back to Egypt? I don't want to go back to the man that I used to be. I don't want to be that person no more. God has created a new thing in me through Christ Jesus. Behold, all old things are gone. They're done. All things are new through Jesus. I don't want to go back to Egypt. I don't want to go back to slavery. They were struggling between the chains of, of, of slavery and the wings of freedom. The chains that hold them or held them to their past. Amen. But the wings that would lift them to new heights. Chains of slavery. Wings of freedom. And they were the opposite end of their journeys. They left one to get to the other. But yet, as soon as they left the other, they wanted to turn around and go back. How many times have we been through that? How many times has God allowed us to leave that, that, that past thing behind and open that door and we second-guess ourselves and think, wow, maybe I shouldn't have left there at all. See, Israel would rather go back into bondage than to pay the price of victory. And so many times we act just like Israel. We would rather go back to the bondage of the enemy than to fight for victory. We would rather go back to the way it was. So many times we'd rather settle for the muck and the mire of mediocrity than to strive for the pursuit and the possession of the promise. So many times in the body of Christ we can't reach Canaan we can't reach the promised land. We can't reach our destiny. We cannot reach success because our mind is still on Egypt. Yes, your eyes are on Canaan, but your mind is still on Egypt. Friend, listen to me. We just celebrated four years. 
Four years here. God has brought us, and we've been here now four years. We just celebrated at the very beginning of the month. Four years of victorious living. Four years of celebration. And the thought keeps coming back to me, and I believe it's the Lord revealing to me and just questioning me of how can we have a, a made-up mind? How can we focus our minds as well as our eyes on the Canaan experience for this church? On the Canaan experience for our lives? Um, how do we reach that individual promised land, if you will? How do we reach out and grab that promise in our lives for not only this body, but your lives and your children as well? How do we do it? I believe this morning God has shown me two ways. Two ways to reach this. And the first way is this. Is that God wants to change our focus. He wants to change our focus. That's been my key word all week during football. A lot of you know that football started in my, and I coach my boys. And I've been telling the boys all week, Pastor, focus, <laughs> focus. Focus. Uh, if you've ever worked with uh, kids or kids ministry or kids sports, it's hard to keep their attention. Even as your pastor, it's hard to keep your attention. A lot of you right now are thinking of Golden Corral. You are. You know you are. You're, th you're thinking of the, the super American Japanese Chinese buffet. That's what you're thinking about right now. You're thinking about my many things. You gotta get it's hard to keep your focus. And as we live this life, the Lord is wanting to change your focus. See, the Bible said that as soon as they hit the highway, as soon as they hit the road, amen, as soon as they begin to this journey, murmur, murmuring had settled in. They begin to murmur against the leader, did they not? That's what the Bible says. They begin to murmur against the leader. They were saying, We wish that we would have died. In the hand of, of the Egyptians. <laughs> uh, you know, we want to be back to where the flesh pots were. Back to where our stomachs were full. We want to go back in the way it was, Pastor. Ooh, boy, you didn't know where I was coming from on that one, did you? We want to go back to the way it was, Pastor. Mm, thank you, Lord. Isn't it funny? Isn't it funny how that how that our lives is conti co consistently changing, and that how a lot of us want to live the way it was? Isn't it funny how we always want to go back? Isn't it funny how we we concentrate on how the things used to be, what used to have, or what we used to do? Friend, let me tell you this: it's good to have memories. Okay, precious memories, how they linger. It's good to have memories. It's good to, to it's, it, it's even good to reminisce. It's good. I remember the days of growing up in the church and how I was little and I'd fall asleep and they'd kick me under the, the pew and push me under. They would. They'd just push me under the pew and I'm all drooling and sleeping. And, and, and I remember the days where the ladies, boy, they get to shouting, you know, and Bobby Pitt begin to fly. And I, I remember the days when, when they'd jump the pews and walk the top of the pews. I remember those days. And, and it's good to reminisce. It's good to, 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 to remember those things and, and to to reflect the past, friend. But let me tell you that that that's uh, what what you need to know is that you cannot progress forward by living in the past. Um, you will never move forward if you keep looking backwards. And the Lord has been constantly proving Himself to us here at Crossroads over and over and over. And he's taking us through those Red Sea experiences. He's taking us through dangers that have been seen and unseen. Yet every time He tries to take us to the next level in Christ Jesus, we stand there looking over our shoulders in retrospect and contemplating what used to be. Mm, that's good preaching. Oh. Tell me that's good preaching. Oh, thank you. That's good preaching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. What used to be. Uh, do you know that every time he does this, every time he does this, he, he tries to take us to the next level. L let me share this with you. Do you know that in the eyes of Israel, in the eyes of Israel, that next level the Lord wanted to take them to, it did not look pleasing. It didn't, did it? It didn't look pleasing to them. Well, we go all the way back to Joshua and Caleb that we talked about last week. What did they say? They're bigger than we are. It did not look pleasing to 
them. They thought, they, oh, it's going to be so tough to, to, to go into this project. Yeah. Hard work. It's going to be so, oh, we're going to have to dig really deep and give out of the, everything that was sacrificial giving to go into this next level. Mm, wow. Yeah. Where are you going, Pastor? Friend, the, the, oh, hallelujah. Uh, uh, the next level did not look like a better place. It did not look like there was increase. There was hard work. It, it was hard to give up the, 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 the flesh pots of Egypt. Israel was so concerned at eating from these pots of Pharaoh that they were willing to, to give up on the land that was flowing with opportunity of milk and honey and promise. And likewise, we get so caught up in our yesterdays that we can never get to our tomorrows. We get so caught up in it. And I'm speaking to myself here too. We, we get so caught up in what happened last week that we cannot focus on what God has for us today. We get so focused on what happened yesterday that we miss out on God's blessing today. And the Lord is offering us success today. He's offering us eternal happiness, eternal peace, eternal life. And we would just turn our minds to Him, forget about Egypt, and press on to the promise. And we would stop allowing the enemy to convince us to return to those things that God's already brought you out of. You know what is amazing to me? Oh, Lord. It's amazing to me how time flies. <laughs> What's amazing to me is that God has brought you and me out of so many things of our past. I mean, He's brought us out of places for a reason. Do you know He's brought you out of uh, away from others for a reason too? Oh, yeah. oh I'm going to matter with you now. Some of you, He's brought you out of away from family members for a reason. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that was too lusty. He's brought you out of from, from that, that, that land of Egypt for a reason. He brought you out of it, and then you contemplate every day going back to it. Hmm. Oh, that, that was free. <laughs> oh, every day. I hear it over and over. Oh, Pastor, I think we're going to do this, or we're going to go back to that. Friend, He's brought you out of it. He delivered you. You know the struggles you had then and there. favor than anything else in my life? 
Come on now. I, I, outside of salvation, I'm talking to God's people here. I believe everybody in here is, is God's people. I'd rather have God's favor in my life outside of anything else. Yeah. Give me Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Give me Jesus. I don't need a, a, an economy that's booming. I don't need Medicare, Medicaid. I don't need insurance. I don't need anything else. You give me Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus outside of anything else. Because when we have Jesus, when we have Him and operate in that favor, all I believe that that means three things. Number one, we need to have the accessibility of His presence. Do you know that His presence is available to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's available to us through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one. Don't you let nobody tell you that you can get to the Father in any other way except through Jesus Christ. It's something that this world is trying to change the truth and they're trying to twist the truth and people of high authority and on television tell you that it's hard to accept that we can, you cannot get to God through just you know any other way that's only got to be one avenue and I'm telling you today the gospel of the Lord says it's got to go through Jesus yeah. Jesus yeah. Jesus that's why everything should be done in Jesus name yeah. I was out there last night pastor and I was trying to uh, to really just just be that cheerleader to my team I took them out the second half, and we were down by, by 12 points, 12 to nothing. And I took them out of the goal pole, and I lined them all up, and I started walking like a general. I said, then let me tell you, young man, you can. You can do it. You can do it. You can do all things through Jesus. And I believe Caleb looked at me, and he's like, oh, that's going to preach. And I, and I, looked at, I looked at all these young men, and I said, amen. And they looked at me, what does amen mean? <laughs> Jobs pull us in many different directions. You have a, a, a spouse or a children. You know, children go out to colleges and uh, different. We we're pulled in so many different directions. But when you operate in the presence of the Lord, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When you operate in the favor of God. Yes. Thank you. Mm. When you have access to the presence of God Almighty through Jesus Christ. When we can really accept that, friend, then what's going to happen is that's going to give us the ability to grasp a hold of His power. And that's the number two thing I believe is that we need to understand that we have an advantage. We have the power of God. Do you know that? We have the power of God. That means that although it might seem like the enemy has the upper hand on you, oh, <laughs> I beg to differ. I beg to differ, friend. Listen, you have the advantage over him because God is our Father and we are his children and we have the power to move in his authority. Not in my authority as your pastor. 
Pastor, not in your authority as who you are, but in the authority of God Almighty. The Bible says that you have the power amen, to lay hands on someone and they shall be healed. And then we have the power to cast out demons, power to set the, the, the captives free. We have the power to call things that, that, that be not as though they were. Luke 
Luke 19 and the, and the story of Zacchaeus. What did he say? He stopped what he was doing and he said, Zacchaeus, you come down from that tree for I'm going to your house and I'm going to bring the promise to you. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to take you to a new level. And he's got, hey, listen, friend, when we will take and, and get our minds clear of Egypt, we will focus on the promise. God's going to clear the schedule and he's going to say, hey, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to show you how to receive. I'm going to show you how to get to the promised land. Amen. Listen, he is here today to take you to that land of promise. And Jesus is here today to bring you to that place called Canaan. We stand to your feet. We're going to close. Hallelujah. I'm not done, but we've got to close. Hallelujah. Friend, he's here today to take you to that place known as milk and honey. That, that place known as opportunity. But you need to turn your eyes away from Egypt. You need to turn your eyes away from Egypt. You need to change your focus. Begin to focus on the promise. Begin to focus on the promised land. See, the promised land is our dwelling place. We are not supposed to be dwelling in the past. You can't change what happened yesterday. You can't change what happened this morning. You can't change it. It's done. So why dwell on it? Why dwell on it? Why dwell on Egypt? Why dwell on those things that, that, that took place? Why, why would you want to go back to that, that, that area or that land uh, or, or that bondage that you were in? Why? When God has opened the door of opportunity to live in His presence, to walk into the Lord, He is here to take you to that promise, but you need to keep your eyes off of Egypt and focus on the promise. And I want